Good evening and welcome to the Manila Times TV's newest show, Congress Diaries. This is where we analyze, scrutinize, and explore the pros and cons of some of the more interesting and controversial bills in our Congress. I'm your host, Kim Bernardo Lokin. Recently, the House Committee on Ways and Means approved a substitute bill seeking to increase the motor vehicle road users tax. The proposed measure is called the Motor Vehicle Road Users Act. It seeks a 90% increase to be staggered at 30% increase per year. And they say that it will start next year on the year 2020. The road user tax was first imposed in the year 2000. And if the substitute bill is approved, motorists will have to pay extra next year. At ngayon, para pag-usapan natin ito at ang epekto ng transport crisis sa business sector, makakausap natin ngayon at guest natin ngayon si Mr. George Chua and he is the president ng Federation of Philippine Industries. So, uh, good evening, uh, Mr. George Chua. Thank you for uh, being with us here. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to your uh, program, Kong Kim, mm -hmm. and of course to all of your uh, viewers, a pleasant day. Oo nga, alam mo, pleasant day sana. Kaya lang yung uh, walang katapusan na issue sa traffic eh, hindi ba? Hindi lang po yun, uh, yung nabanggit nyo nga, yung road, road user tax. Road user tax, uh -huh. that's right. Talagang malaking... Uh, pasanin para sa lahat ng mga tao yan. Right. Okay, so I guess we can uh, start with um, your position first. I know that uh, you are involved in the automotive industry, apart from being the president, of course, of the Federation of Philippine Industries. Th that is correct. Uh, right. We're also the distributor of an, uh, an international car brand mm -hmm. uh, based in China. And I also sit in both the boards of the Chamber of Automotive Manufacturers of the Philippines mm -hmm. and the Truck Manufacturers Association. So this is very uh, close to our hearts. No? Mm -hmm. And as president of the Federation of Philippine Industries, and it also affects us because of the uh, logistics requirements of all of these manufacturing companies that mm -hmm. are part of our uh, federation. Mm -hmm. So our, our position is, First of all, as you mentioned, this has been implemented for a long time already. Yes. But really, nobody has an accounting for what yes. has been accomplished. Oh, it has started ano in 2000, sa, oh, right? Ano so, ba ho ang nangyari doon? Imagine mo, ha? Let's start with uh, what they want now. Mm -hmm. What they want is a 90% increase <laughs> staggered in three years, ano? Kasi 30% increase for the first year. So, that means three years yan, di ba? Mm -hmm. So, ang position, ang official position ninyo dyan uh, for the Federation of Philippine Industries is that you want an accounting first or oh, a review? Naman po, dapat namin, naman na maintindihan natin kung talaga, talaga nga bang napunta sa tamang bagay yung mga chinarge sa atin na road user stocks. Yes. Tapos hindi rin naman natin maintindihan kung saan talaga paggagamitan yung additional 90% na increase na gusto nilang gawin. That's right. Kung matatandaan nyo po, uh, ang automotive industry, bago nila in-increase yung taxes no sa excise taxes taxes on fuels ang automotive industry ho natin ay nag-peak noong 2017 tapos biglang bumagsak na ho noong 2018 mm -hmm. dahil kasi nga ho sa napakaraming taxes na naapektuhan ang automotive industry natin at syempre ka naman ho ang nangyari diyan ay may mga may mga iba tayong kumpanya mm -hmm. na nagbawas rin ng mga empleyado so, oh. lahat ho yan ay apektado. Right. So, siguro, um, for the benefit of uh, our viewers, we want to um, uh, exactly pinpoint what is this road user's tax? San ba ito? Na, kasi sa regular na commuters, they wouldn't know if this will affect them uh -huh. or not. Da, diba? Dahil hindi mo nakikita sa pang-araw-araw uh -huh. na, no, eh, na... At unang-una, uh -huh. uh, mag magandang katanungan niya. Ano, ang uh, pagkaintindi ko ho dyan sa road user stocks, ayan ho ay eh, ipinapatong o idinadagdag sa ating... Uh, registration ng mga sasakyan. Okay. So, o di sasabihin kaya, ng iba, yung may sasakyan, sasakyan na sasakyan, di ba? Oh. So, walang, walang kaso sa akin yan. Pero, alam niyo po, hindi ho totoo yan dahil kasi, kasi lahat ho kayo mm -hmm. ay gumagamit ng jeepney, gumagamit ho kayo ng mga UV Express, gumagamit ho kayo ng TNBs, uh, TNBs, TNBs oh. at saka bus. Mm -hmm. Lahat ho yan, 
Eh, siyempre ka, pagka nadagdagan yung kanilang buwis na ibinabayad sa rehistro nila, eh kayo rin ho ang magpapasa niyan. Dahil kasi... Tataas ipa pambasahe. Ipapasa rin nila sa inyo yan. That's right. So, maapektuhan ho lahat. Right. Eh, sa mahali naman ng bilihin ngayon, tapos tataasan natin yan, ang mga, em, yung mga empleyado naman ho, magkaklamo rin sila na mag-increase ng aumento. Eh, pag nag-increase naman ng aumento, marami naman manufacturers at saka mga ibang kumpanya na nagbibigay empleyo sa atin, mm -hmm. na sasabihin nila, eh, hindi na namin kayang magbayad ng ganyan. Mm -hmm. At ang napepwer sa yung iba na either mag-underground na lang sila at wala nang buwis na makokolekta ang gobyerno dahil kasi nga hindi na nagre-report. O kung hindi naman, marami rin tayong kumpanya na nalalaman na either na nagsara mm -hmm. o nagbabas ng tao. Okay, so ang question ko dyan is that you are... Uh You are demanding a review first before you oh. open up new taxes such as this one. Oh. E paano kung uh, pumasa yung bill ng uh, ganyan? Kasi ang kanilang target is 2020. They want to start and that's uh, oh, uh, a month or two from now. So 2020 na. So what will you do? Eh, Unang-una ho, kailangan ho natin maintindihan na hindi naman ho unreasonable yung malaman ng ating mga kababayan, mm -hmm. yung mga taxpayers natin and vehicle owners, kung ano ho ba ang nangyari doon sa kanilang road users tax na binabayaran na ngayon. Mm -hmm. At uh, importante rin ho naman nila maintindihan na ano ho ba ang beneficyo para sa kanila. Dahil mm -hmm. kasi every year na since na-implement yung road users tax, hindi ho naman natin masasabi na gumagaang ang ating problema sa Trapiko. Trapiko. Oh, eh, actually nga, taon-taon, eh, lalo pang na humihirap at nagmamahal ang pamasahe. Oo nga, kasi sabi nila dito, okay, the collected tax was supposed to be used for road maintenance and improvement, installation of traffic lights and road safety devices and the air pollution control. Yet, since the time it started, what, that was two decades ago, kasi uh -huh. year 2000, Uh, marami ba tayong nakitang pagbabago? Meron, well, kung, meron tatain, ba? kung tatanungin ho natin ang pangkaraniwan na commuter o pangkaraniwan na nagmamaneho ng sasakyan, Lumala. <laughs> eh, masasabi ho natin na hindi ho nila nakita ang improvement. Mm -hmm. Nag-worsen ang pollution. Ang, road, mm -hmm. ang roads uh, natin ay hindi naman natin masasabing uh, laging well-maintained. Makikita naman natin na Nagba, konting ulan lang ho, eh nagbabaha. That's right. Uh, pangalawa, pangatlo ho, eh yung traffic naman natin, eh ha halos araw-araw ho, eh mas lalong humihirap. That's true, lalo na ngayon, malapit na ang uh, holiday season, hindi ba? So, there was also this issue of the road board, right? When the, this uh, tax was first introduced in 2000, uh, along with it came the creation of the road board. And uh, this was recently abolished after allegations of corruption and uh, misuse of funds. And uh, as some people would like to say, that is actually an understatement. So what is the reaction of the business community um, we, for well, this we one? feel that the abolition of the road board is an indication that the system was not working. Okay. And that the funds that were being raised from the collection of taxes were not being put to the right use because, as you mentioned, It was closed because of corruption and accountability of funds and, and so on. And the mere fact that they closed yes. it, then it, it, isn't it's just it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh -huh. right. So, ngayon, sabi nila, naniniwala, ito ang tanong, naniniwala ba kayo na napakaraming mga sasakyan sa kalsada, sa, nasanhi ng traffic jam sa Metro Manila? I think we were discussing this uh -huh. before we uh, went on air, di ba? Eh, sa isang, ang sabi nyo, is that, um, sa anong ating alternative, correct? Uh, maganda hong nabanggit nyo yan, dahil kasi sa katunayan lang, wala naman hong taong gustong magmaneho sa ganitong klaseng traffic. Kaya lang ho, napipwersa ho sila na bumili ng kanilang sariling sasakyan sapagkat wala hong alternatibo. Paano nilang dadalhin yung kanilang mga bata sa eskwelahan? Paano sila pupunta sa kanilang pinagtatrabahuhan? Paano nila ihahatid si misis papunta sa palengke or kung ano man ang kailangan gawin ano, para sa pambahay natin. At uh, ang sitwasyon ho natin ay napakahigpit na nga ho ng uh, miski sumakay ka ng MRT or LRT, tapos yung mga bus nga ho, kumisan na, na, nakikita natin na hinohold up pa yung mga MRT, LRT natin na 
tumitirik, tumitirik. nadin disgrasya, <laughs> tapos yung mga jeepney ho naman natin, eh kung minsan, eh napaka uh, barumbado rin ho magmaneho yung ating driver at nakikipagsapalarang ka sa buhay mo tuwing sumasakay ka sa ganyang mga bagay na yan. Mm -hmm. So, ang masasabi ko ho, eh hindi naman ho nila dapat tanggalin pa yung alternatibo ng tao na magsumikap at bumili ng kanilang sariling sasakyan. Ang isa pa hong alternatibo na ginawa ng gobyerno para maibsan ang ating mahigpit na traffic ay yung color coding scheme nila no? o yung number Tama. coding scheme. Yes. Sa totoo ho lamang, ayan ho ay uh, uh, hindi ho talaga nagiging epektibo dahil kasi marami hong tao na gumagamit ng ibang sasakyan. Napipilitan na, silang bumili. Napipilitan silang bumili. So, yes. imbis na halimbawa, yan ho ay maidadagdag nila sa kanilang panggasto sa buhay o madadagdag nila sa kanilang pambayad sa kanilang uh, uh, amortization sa mga bahay nila mm -hmm. or, or sa mga edukasyon, yan ho ay napepwersa pa ho silang gumastos sa ibang, ibang bagay para lang Ma makarao sila dahil kasi kailangan naman sila magtrabaho, kailangan naman sila maghatid ng bata sa eskwelahan. So napakalungkot rin ho yan. At alam niyo ho ba, ang Pilipinas na po ang pinakamataas ang logistics ko sa buong ASEAN. Uh -huh. uh, may World Bank and IMF study na nagsasabi ang ating logis logistics cost ay over 30%. Wow. Whereas our other neighboring ASEAN countries, ang pinakakompetitive ay under 10%. So sa makatuwid, makikita nyo yan ho ay nagdadagdag sa ating mahal na bilihin. At pangalawa, yan ho ay nagpapahira para sa atin maging competitive sa uh, mga imported products at exports natin. Alright, so uh, because of all the things that you had mentioned, bilang pinuno ng uh, Philippine Federation, uh, Federation, or the Federation of Philippine, of Philippine, of Philippine Industries, uh, Industries, so ano ngayon ang maipapayo nyo o ano ngayon ang hinihingi nyo sa gobyerno para... Maibsa ng ganitong klaseng problema natin. And uh, especially now that uh, we have the looming road user tax Oho. in Congress. Alam nyo po, uh, kahit sa ang sector kayo, kahit private or government sector, yeah. pag ang isang empleyado nyo ho ay umaasa o humihingi ng uh, increase, aumento sa sahod niya, ang kad kadalasan hong basihan niyan ay yung pinatawag nating meritocracy. Right. Kung ano ho ba yung accomplishment niya? Ano oh. ba yung nagawa mo? Yes, ano yun, ba yung naitulong mo sa yun, ating ito kumpanya? Yung, ito yung parang uh, performance review. Performance bago review. Ka oh. So sana naman ho, maintindihan rin ng ating mga legislators, lalong lalo na yung taga-kongreso natin, na bago ho sila mag-enact uh, ng bagong batas, ay eh sana maintindihan nila na yung idadagdag nilang buwis yan ho ba ay effective in its current form mm -hmm. na i-review natin na may naitulong ba yan o naging source lang ng corruption. So yun ho ang kailangan natin na asahan sa gobyerno natin. Dahil kasi ako naman ho naniniwala ang gobyerno ho natin ay talaga namang gustong tumulong. Yun nga lang kumisan na hindi, hindi, hindi klaro ang kanilang uh, naiisip kung paano tutulong. So palagay ko po ay mabuti ho, i-review nila lahat yung mga kanilang polisiya, mm -hmm. yung kanilang mga buwis na ipinapataw sa atin, at saka yung mga methodologies nila kung paano mm -hmm. i-resolve ang uh, logistics cost, ang traffic situation, mm -hmm. and also the, uh, the accidents being caused on the road. Okay, so uh, that, uh, that seems fair uh, mm -hmm. enough. But uh, I don't know now kung... Uh, Asaan na tayo sa na park doon sa batas na yan ano? I don't know whether we are still at the committee level or we are already almost near passing that no. So were you ever consulted? Um, I don't think we were specifically consulted uh, as Campi and TMA or or, or as FPI mm -hmm. uh, for the road users tax. Yes. Although I am aware that in many other issues we have been consulted by but this by, particular but this particular one issue. i don't recall attending any of the hearings no mm -hmm. and uh, i think that uh, with your program through your mm -hmm. program uh, which is congress diaries oh. i think a lot of your <laughs> other members in congress who yes. know you uh, might be able to listen in on this program and be able to say oh let me think about that maybe we can recall it or modify it since it hasn't been enacted into law yet or mm -hmm. even the implementing rules and regulations can be modified so that it uh, becomes more positive in the sense that 
uh, certain conditions are put in place prior to implementation. But you know, sometimes uh, the other organizations, no, lalo na business sector, no, maybe uh, one of the more effective ones would be uh, to put out a position paper on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, is your uh, F, uh, Federation, Federation of Philippine Industries well, the, willing the to do? Well, the position papers normally come from the uh, industry associations directly involved in the automotive and transport sector, mm -hmm. which is through CAMPI and TMA. Right. And I believe we have already expressed our uh, position on that in the uh, negative. No, of course. So, nag-oppose uh, nag uh, kami. Oh, oh. Oh. Ah, okay. So, this one uh, is there already. So. Yes. Pero yun nga lang, ho, hindi ho natin masabi kung eh, pinakikinggan nga ho ba <laughs> o parang maliit lang ho ang boses natin. Oo. So, ngayon, ang tanong dyan, kasulad niyan, di ba, we need to review a little bit oh. about, you know, what happened to uh, the... Lahat ng pera uh, na kinolekta. Oh, yes, oh. the road user's tax that was previously collected. E, bilyon-bilyon piso na naman ang madadagdagan ngayon sa sa revenue in case uh, that this bill gets passed, no? So, bilang miyembro ng business sector, not just the automotive uh, sector, uh, San, where do you think uh, you know we could put uh, a more good use to this uh, pondo or money that will be collected from us? Uh, alam niyo po, sana maumpisa na talaga natin yung uh, part ng build, build, build program ay yung hong, uh, mass transport systems natin. Yes. Kung hindi ho natin mauumpisahan yan, eh talaga ho ang problema natin ay eh, hindi ho malulutas. So, kailangan ho natin yan na uh, magkaroon tayo ng more efficient mass transport systems such as subways or even elevated uh, 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 tracks. No? Mm -hmm. Tapos yung railway system ho natin, kailangan ho natin ma-improve yan dahil kasi marami tayong mga uh, expansion na ang uh, mga residents outside of Metro Manila, mga That's Bulacan. Right. Cavite, Batangas, lahat ho yan, eh, may tumitira na hong tao na nagtatrabaho ho sa loob ng Metro Manila. At saka, it will help decongest the traffic. Tama po yan. And uh, the number of people in Metro Manila. Kaya, lang, kaya nga ho, kailangan ho nila bigyan ng pagkakataon o bigyan ng uh, um, we, ways and means para makapunta ang mga, mga tao doon sa kanilang pinagtatrabahuhan, pinag-aaralan. Mm -hmm. This is actually under the Ways and Means Committee nga eh. Uh -huh. Ito nga sila nagde-deliberate niyan so dapat maintindihan nila yan. So ngayon, uh, ang final question natin uh, siguro uh, is that okay, like I said, we don't know where the status what is the status of uh, this bill now, no? Mm -hmm. Ang tanong dyan is that, or ano ang clamor or ang appeal ng ating uh, business community sa ating mga legislators before this road users uh, tax bill would even be uh, approved? Uh, actually, ang example na naiisip ko po na pinato sa atin under the train law, no? mm. ay yun hong uh, excise tax na in-increase nila sa mm -hmm. mga uh, sasakyan at saka po yung... Uh, fuel price increases na pinataw rin nila sa mga ating gasoline and diesel uh, products. No? Masasabi ko po na ang automotive industry ay masyado pong naapektuhan yan. Bumagsak ho ang ating automotive industry at napilitan ho yung mga ibang kasamahan natin sa automotive sector na magbawas ng tao dahil kasi nga ho bumaba ang demand sa ating mga sasakyan. So, palagay ko po, Bago ho sila magpataw, siguro pag-isipan ho nilang mabuti yung efficient use ng kanilang kinokolektang taxes. Tama. Bago ho sila magdagdag ng buwis. Dahil kasi alam ho naman natin yung collection rate natin ay mababa pa. That's right. Tapos pangalawa nga ho, sinabi niyo yung dahilan na kung bakit isa na rin na yung road board ay because of corruption. corruption. Yes. So isipin niyo yung perang nawawala natin sa corruption na palagay ko po, katapat-tapat lang naman na parang bago mo hingian yung tao ng panibagong buwis, ay eh dapat eh, siguraduhin mo yung nakakolekta mong buwis, ay eh, tamang buwis, meaning to say lahat ay eh, nakakolektaan mo, walang nawawala sa smuggling, walang nawawala sa corruption, <laughs> hindi mo ba? At kung tama ho yung nakakolekta mo, palagay ko, baka hindi mo, talagang hindi mo na kailangan 
na mag-increase. Magdagdag, oh, magdagdag. Oh. Okay, so uh, on that note, uh, we thank you very much. Uh, we'd like to thank our guest uh, for the first half of this morning or this evening, uh, Mr. George Shua. He is uh, the president of the Federation of Philippine Industries and he also represents uh, the automotive uh, industry. Congress Diaries will be back after the break. Please stay with us. Hi everyone, I am Zihar Basho and welcome to the new Clark City where the 30th Southeast Asian Games will be held this November. Dito gaganapin ang tagisa ng mga atleta mula sa iba't ibang bansa ng Southeast Asian region. Mga isyong pinag-uusapan, mga palitang laman ng pahayagan, impormasyong dapat niyong malaman, tatalakayin, pupusisiin, at hihimayin ni Mario Garcia kasama ang kanyang mga panauhin sa harap ng bayan. Face Off! Welcome back to Congress Diaries. In the second part of our show uh, this evening, we will continue our discussion on the transport crisis. And we have with us Attorney Ariel Inton. He is the president the, for the Lawyers and Commuters Safety and Protection. So uh, welcome to Congress Diaries, uh, Attorney Inton. Yes, uh, thank you for inviting us, Congresswoman. Oh, thank you also for uh, being with us here. So. I know you uh, very well because you were my uh, former counselor, uh, and uh, yeah, so we know uh, actually yes. the local problems I there in, say in QC. Notorious, uh, connotation. <laughs> no, no, that's not that's not true. Oh, yeah, you were yeah. also uh, an undersecretary for the uh, LTFRB. We, yes, uh, formerly a board member of LTFRB. A board member uh, of L LTFRB. Okay, so the uh, question natin ngayon, siempre. Eh, ang tawag yata sa iyo sa Quezon City is traffic czar, di ba? Pero because uh, of your past experiences, uh, so ano, ano sa palagay ninyo? How do you find the traffic since the time you were sitting there in the board of LTFRB? That was uh, a few years back. And now? Yeah, siguro, uh, let's expand the discussion hindi lang oh. Quezon City, oh, but oh. you might be biased yeah, about jump, it. Jump, right? jump off oh, ka jump off from, from QC. Oh, oh. Uh, the whole Metro Manila. Okay. Or probably other uh, other metro cities. Right. So, uh, of course, traffic is a problem. No? As it George has... would say, di ba? Uh -oh. talagang problema yan. At uh, sa amin, sa Lawyers for Community Safety and Protection, uh, we see it this way. Na there are two, two basic problems. One is volume. The other one is discipline. Okay, I think hmm. discipline, alam na natin yan. Pero uh, the volume, uh, Attorney Inton, eh, katulad nga ng sinabi ng ating uh, isang guest kanina, no? si uh, Mr. George Chua, eh, di naman nila gustong magmaneho. I okay. mean, if you had the choice, the, the, ayaw mo magmaneho uh, ng ganito. There are reasons why a person will buy a car. Yes. Okay. At yun usual reason dyan ng Pilipino is that's a status symbol. Oops, pagka nakagaan-gaan ka, uh, uh, imbis na bibila ko ng bahay, hindi. Bibila ko ng sasakyan. Mm -hmm. Paano kasi, not like before, during the old days, ang hirap mong makabili ng sasakyan. Dadaan ka sa butas ang karayom sa credit investigation, di ba? That's right. At wala yung mga zero, uh, zero down payment. Oo, uh -oh, the promos. Eh ngayon, pupunta uh -oh. ka sa mall, may eh, sasakyan ka ng makikita doon, nakadisplay, makakabili ka. So it's, really very easy to buy a car. 
Mm-hmm. No? At dahil doon, not bad at all, di ba? Bakit mm-hmm. hindi? Eh, kung, ano, kaya lang, kapag nabili yun, ang experience ng grupo namin dyan, mm-hmm. napakaraming hindi nakakabayad ng monthly amortization. So, ang resulta, na rerimata. Na-re-re-mata. Pero, nandiyan na. Nandun na. So, that's one reason. The other reason, I agree with George, because the, that's, there's no other option. That's right. Uh, bibili akong sasakyan dahil wala akong masakyan. At kung meron man akong masakyan, eh, apat na oras ako bago makasakay. So, I need to buy a car for my family, for my work, for my livelihood. So, that adds on. Pangatlo, decoding system. I don't know why we stick with decoding system hanggang ngayon when in fact it is a failed system. Uh, is it the best bad system available for us? Mm-hmm. Why, di ba? Nandun pa rin. But you say, you say it's a failed system, but that was the system that was in place uh, long before. I mean, you were uh, also a yeah, part yeah, of but the... I, I, I did not... Uh, you did not agree to that. Agree to that, no? Right. So it, what is... Sa, what, it's why? like this. No? Sa akin is, bakit yung nagkaroon ng coding, ang ginawa, bumili ng pangalawang sasakyan. Pangatlo pa, pangapat. Tapos ang binawasan mo... Ang kinoding mo pa yung public transportation. Mm-hmm. So you you deduct 20% less public transportation units that should have been available to commuters. Mm-hmm. Binawasan mo eh. Mm-hmm. Di ba? Na dapat nasasakyan. Ngayon, ang sabi, eh hindi, kasi hindi na tayo kasya sa kali eh. Di ba? Okay. Oh, eh, yun na nga. Dumagdag pa nga eh. Kasi bumili nga ng pangalawa, pangatlong kotse. Mm-hmm. So, Really, we have to review this coding, you know, coding uh, system and find out if we have to stick to it. Kahit alam natin na uh, it didn't work out, mm-hmm. or we are sticking to it because, as I said, it's the best bad idea available to us. Or yeah, wala silang may isip na bago, mm-hmm. maare, di ba? So yung grupo ninyo, the lawyers for commuter safety and protection. Do you have alternative solutions uh, for this particular issue? Uh, Attorney Inton? Okay. Ang, sa, uh, ang ina, isang sinadjust namin uh, is we have to share the road. Not only the road itself, but the time using the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, sa amin, ang sinadjust namin is sino ba yung mga unang dapat nasa kali? Mm-hmm. Diba? Sa tingin namin, yung mga walang sasakyan yung mga umaasa sa public transportation. Ito yung mga alas 4 ng umaga, nandun na. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'll give you an example of how bad it is. Ha? Commonwealth Avenue. Sa Commonwealth Avenue, 4 o'clock pa lang, or even before 4, marami ng pasahero doon. Mm-hmm. At yung mga pasahero yon, aabutan yun ng batch na 5 o'clock, batch 6 o'clock, dahil nga hindi makasakay yung mga naunang 4, naunang 5. So, ano sila? O, ano nangyayari? Ay, abutan sila ng uh, na-occupy nila two, two more lanes. So, mm-hmm. it adds to the traffic jam. Di ba? So, pero bakit ganon? Kasi nakita natin na kung coding ang isang bus, kunyari, kung yung bus na coding, aabutan siya sa turnaround ng alas 7. So, hindi na niya ilalabas? Hindi na niya ilalabas yun. Pero, may alas 4 nga tayong pasahero. Wala pang coding ng alas 4. Wala pang coding ng alas 5. Di ba? So, ang suggestion namin, may extend natin ng konti. Makakasa kayo alas 4, extend natin until 8 or 9 para makapag-turn around. Nahatid natin yung mga alas 4. I see. Diba? So, that's what we call, okay, if you want to stick with the coding, let's modify it. No, modify natin. Oo nga. Sabi mo that uh, we need to prioritize yung mga walang sasakyan. Hmm. Tama. Actually, uh, Attorney Inton, lahat tayo, okay, may sasakyan ka, okay, wala. We need to we need to go where we need to go, di ba? For example, uh, Attorney Inton, ikaw ba nag-commute uh, ka papunta dito sa Manila Times TV? 
Na studio, syempre, hindi, di ba? Well, I will not do that. Oh, you <laughs> diba? see? Diba? That's right. Okay, so, but tayo, there's a but. Huh? E equal rights oh, lang, di ba? But diba? there's a but. You know what's the but there? Uh -huh. uh, I left early. Oh, me too. Oh, yeah. di ba? Oh. Para hindi tayo makadagdag doon sa traffic. Now, I, uh, continue ko lang yung example. Oh, ko, sige. Okay. Now, natin mo na yun. Okay. Pag natin mo na yun, That seems to be a sound idea mas, na... Mas maluwag ngayon. Mababawasan. Yung mga private vehicles. Oh. Bakit? Nakatid mo na ano eh. At yung mga bus, eh, subi na sila. Mm -hmm. Balik na lang sila sa ano. Uh, para yun... Kasi, di ba, nakakita tayong half empty, half filled buses. Mm -hmm. Di ba? Kapag nakakita tayo sa... O, oh, kita nyo, ang daming bus. Wala na nakasakay. Mm -hmm. Eh, paano kasi nakita nila yung bumaba na yung pasahero sa MRT? Right. Kaya yung nakita nila... Oh. Eh, wala nang pasayaw sa bus kasi nakababa na. Oh. Di ba? Okay. That's an example. Kung nakababa na, bakit pa dapat bumahi yung bus? Kung wala nang pasayaw okay. sa luluwag. Tama. Then, yung time naman yeah. sa mga private car owners. So, di ba, we are talking about, let's uh, have, uh, ika nga, we, we modify also uh, yung pagpasok ng government employees, private mm -hmm. Employees, di ba? So probably we can do that everything kapag napag-aralan natin, what time do we need to be on the road? Kasi pag na-traffic ka, you would see na ganun din pala ang travel time mo kung umalis ka ng wala ng traffic. Tama, oo. So that, those are actually very sound ideas. Uh, have you tried proposing those already oh, to the uh, when, agencies? Uh, yeah, when I was with LTFRB oh. and I got bash. <laughs> <laughs> and to think, nakaupo ka na nun, ha? Oh, board, kasi, nasa hindi, board ka na nun, kasi, ha? And I, I understood, I, I, of course, I understand the feeling of the car owners. Eh, bakit? Bumili na ako sa sakyan. Kailangan gamitin mo, no? Hindi ako mapipigil ako. Anong oras ko gusto? Hindi ano? naman. Oo. Hey, that's, yung that's, a basic, that's a basic right, yun, yun di ba? Ang, yun ang pagbas natin. Ah, yun yung ginawa sa'yo. I'm not saying oh. that yun ang mentality oh. ng lahat. Oh. So, ibig sabihin, tama nga naman. Kaya nga ako bumili para magamit ko. Tama. Di ba? So, yun ang ano doon na kaya siya bumili para magamit ko. Pero ang tanong... Dahil wala naman siyang masakyan. Yan. So, ito. wala siyang masakyan. Diba? So, we... Doon na naman tayo na... Bakit tayo walang masakyan? Eh, binawasan po ang pupunga ng 20% yung public Hindi, transportation. Hindi, kaya tayo walang masakyan, oh. Attorney Inton, is because wala tayong effective na mass transport system. For example... Uh, well, we will, Congresswoman, we will wait oh. for a decade or two para oh. ano, ano? Kasi dapat during the 60s, 70s, ginawa na yun. Diba? Oh. So, kung ganun na wala pa tayong mass transportation, Do we want our people to suffer further just because wala ba tayong mass transportation? Hintayin natin, di ba? Right. So what is available right now at buses? Correct. So, I agree. Kung yan ang available, bay, bigay natin. Hindi lang, wag naman yung kolorum buses. Ha? Ano? Yung oh, mga yung mga, legal, yung yung mga legit, franchise. legitimate oh, na may franchise. Yeah. Oh, eto pa, another problem din. Paano naman daw yung mga illegally parked vehicles? Ay, no. Eh, yan na nakaharang sa kalsada. Napakarami ko nakaaway dyan. Oo so, nga. So, ano ba ang policy marami dyan? Marami tayo na nakaaway dyan. Ah, ganito kasi, no? For the longest time, hindi napapansin yun, eh. Nakita mo na nga, no parking. Tama. Pero nakapark pa rin yung sasakit. Oo. Harap na harap na yan. Oo. No? Pag hinuli mo, hindi ko, hindi ko mo nakakita, ma'am, eh. Ah, sir, hindi ko, na, hindi ko nakakita. Yes. Eh, harap na harap mo na. Uh -oh. Saka, boss, taga DILG ako, taga PNP ako, ganyan. Ang dami ng name drop. Congresswoman ako, konsel ako, ganyan. So, tuloy, makikita mo yung attitude ng tao sa towards uh, enforcement mm -hmm. is they think everything will be compromised. So, dun pa lang problema na. Uh -huh. So, kailangan matanggal yon Kailangan talaga we apply the law equally. Right. Kahit na sino ka pa, gano'n. Ngayon, ang illegal parking kasi, marami kasi ano yan pagsama. Hindi, wala naman signboard eh na illegal, ano, na no parking. No parking. O, pero basic yan eh. Pag kumuha ka ng lisensya, na hindi mo dapat eh, uh, in, ano, hinaharangan yung driveway, for instance. Mm -hmm. Hindi dapat within 4 meters na magpa-park ka sa fire hydrant. 
Mm-hmm. Basic lahat yan, pero actually, parang wala. Uh, parang actually, yun. as uh, in your previous uh, hat as a counselor, uh, let's say sa Quezon City, di ba? Mm-hmm. Ang problema din doon, sa gabi, marami rin kasi ang wala rin silang garahe. Yan. Oh, Therefore, uh, pag dumating sila, doon nila ipapark correct. sa kalsada. Oo, oh, yan. So, oh. isa rin yan. So, makikita mo na attitude towards it, and then pangalawa, lack of parking spaces. That's right. Lack of garage. And sometimes it is because the car owner does not want to pay for it. For instance, uh, tingnan mo yung mga condominium. You uh, buy the unit separate from the parking oh, space. Uh, that's right. You, you, you buy a parking space worth 500,000. Ikaw yung car owner. Dalawa ko at siko. That's a million already. Mm-hmm. So, sa labas na lang ako park Tama. Di ba? So, the, yun yung mga problema. Ngayon. Pagka, solutions naman ngayon. Okay. Anong, anong ano natin? I mean, okay, we know already that uh, these are the ones there. Okay, solutions, of course, oh. enforcement. That's one. Talagang honest to goodness enforcement. Pangalawa. At- attorney Inton. <laughs> USEC, counselor, attorney Inton. Uh, sinusubukan natin yung then, enforcement na yan, pero parang one day enforcement. Kasi yung After attitude that, talaga. The next day, hindi, wala na eh. Congresswoman, hindi na one day. <laughs> One hour lang. Hindi <laughs> naman nagpa... Pag alam nila alam mo may media, na, like the Manila Times alam mo ba na, they do kunyari, it for one isang, day. Sa isang kalye, <laughs> nag-operate. Sinubukan namin, oh. we operated. Pagbalik namin, marami na ulit. <laughs> and that's all, that's less Atayin than an hour. Atayin ka lang nila umalis. Ngayon. So, enfor- but again, we really have to enforce. Di ba? Pangalawa, uh, yung parking spaces to be, to be available. We, we have some suggestions sa uh, LCSP for instance, uh, yung mga walang ma-parkingan, ay, teka, before that, ano ba yung pinaka nag- ginagawa ngayon on the ground? Yung tinatawag na one-side parking. Mm-hmm. So, there's a kali here. Okay, one-side tayo. That's not an exception to the no parking ano, no parking ordinance. Mm-hmm. It is more of an accommodation. Na, okay, sige, ang daming sasakyan. Sige, basta tayo one-side parking. Mm-hmm. Marami nag-aaway-aaway doon, Congresswoman. Oo nga, kasi Oo. paano kung yung sa Oo, tapat ng bahay mo naman? Marami, hindi taga doon, nagpa-park sa one right. side. Ginagawa Oo. na, dalawa, tatlong araw na, yon. So, yung one side parking is more of an accommodation. Mm-hmm. No? It solves some, somewhat, it solves a problem, but it creates more problem. Mm-hmm. Now, Another, ano, ito, I, I suggested this. Malls, mga mall. Parking sa mall. After the mall hour, bakante yan eh. Diba? Wala naman nagpa-park dyan ng overnight parking. Bihirang bihira. If, supposing this mall, uh, malapit sa residential area, mm-hmm. yung mga, ano doon, why not park sa mall? Diba? Yun ang isang suggestion namin. Mm-hmm. Alam mo ang sagot, gagastos pa kami. Doon, libre sa kalsada. Dito, yes, sisingiling kami ng mall. So, okay. you see, you, you were able to buy a car and then you cannot even pay a 30 pesos overnight parking or even 50. The overnight parking uh, sa mall, uh, counselor, attorney, is about 200 or 300 yeah, yata. We can, we so, can accommodate, we can, accommodate <laughs> no, we can uh, talk to the mall. Na yes, that's right. Wala I naman nagpa-park dyan. You know, so, reduce the prices of the parking to 30 or 50 mm-hmm. or probably reasonable para ma-accommodate, safe pa yung mga sasakyan nila. Oo, yun. That is uh, very doable. Oo. Pwedeng i-implement yan. There's also one more thing, uh, speaking of parking. Yung uh, ginawa nating example kanina is uh, Commonwealth, hindi ba? Apo. So, for the buses, especially those na that are coding, ayaw na nilang lumabas kasi baka abutan sila abutan sa Abutan talaga because sa of the traffic. Ay, why not yung mga bus uh, operators, kausapin din yung mall operators. Maraming mall doon eh. Sa, sa Commonwealth, may mall doon eh, hindi ba? Yeah. O, oh, eh kung yun. iparada mo siya doon, di ba? Yeah, o kaya also, doon sa malapit sa, yeah. sa may trinoma uh, yeah, area, di ba? We really can improvise yes. eh. No? We don't need the uh, foreign experts to do it for us. Right. We can improvise. You just have to be on the ground. And then, Think of a, a common sense uh, solution, probably it will work. Okay, so speaking of common sense na solutions, uh, I think mas maraming nga yata sa atin sa private sector ang maraming sensible solutions na ganyan, eh, right. di ba? The problem is, George how has, to... 
a lot of common sense that, solution. That, that's true. Diba? So, ang problema natin, ay eh, tayo lang nag-uusap eh, di ba? O, oh, si Mr. George Chua, nakangiti eh, no? But, this is the question. Paano natin mapaparating doon sa mga implementers na the legislators, the ay, local, yeah, the local the, agents, well, the agencies. Mapara yung maparating mo, maaaring magawa mo nila? yan. Di ba? Oh, media, oh. social media, you. Paano naman nila tayo pakikinggan? Question is, pinakikinggan ba? Oh, yun na nga eh. So, <laughs> pinakikinggan ba? It's just a If, circle. Vicious, ano, parang, it's a good idea, but it's not my idea anyway. So, why, so lang, are, you, are you saying na wala na tayong magagawa ngayon? So, well, as I said, there are common, common sense ideas that we can implement easily. But I think... No? Uh, yun eh. Uh, there is the local government, mm -hmm. there's even the barangay can implement it. Like for instance, yung sinasabi ko, one side parking. That's a common sense idea. Mm -hmm. It may create problems, but still, it's a common sense sure, idea. Sure, I mean, diba? it's also being implemented oh, in being other implemented. urban cities in the world. Oh, in so Bawas, if, New York. So, if oh, it's, oh, a so common, yeah, it's a common sense idea, yes. and it's being done, so, uh, as I said, there may be problems, but still, it's a common sense idea. Yes, diba? but common sense uh, might be um, within Not us. common. <laughs> Oo, ay common sa atin, pero hindi masyadong common sa mga yeah. executives that are supposed to implement yeah. it. So what do we do now? Lalo na ngayon, last question. Uh, yung uh, Christmas, rush oh, hour. Yeah, so... <laughs> Eh, you celebrate it at home. That's the best. Eh, pa, paano ka makakaselebrate kung hindi ka makabili ng regalo? Oh, yeah. Kung hindi ka makabili ng pagkain invite mo? Invite online. Eh, pa, paano <laughs> mong invite yung mga, ano, di ba, yung mga kamag-anak mo, reunion yan? You yeah, use your cell phone. Pag Christmas. <laughs> di ba? Really, tama yun. Uh -oh. It's really difficult to, ano, to, to solve the, lalo na traffic jam sa during Christmas expected na natin yan. That's right. Perhaps if we cannot feel the traffic because we're happy about it, then let's be happy about it. I mean, <laughs> who is happy about it? <laughs> Actually, wala. <laughs> yeah, ibig sabihin, when it's Christmas time. Oh, when it's Christmas. Uh, so, medyo uh, palalampasin na nila yung yeah, mga yan because uh, it's already expected. Yeah, Wag it's expected. Naman, I hope we don't get into a situation where because we feel that it is hopeless, wala na tayong ano, diba? I, I, tanggapin na I, lang natin. I don't think it's really hopeless, Kim. I really don't think it's hopeless. It's just that uh, there are common sense solutions, as I said. Mm -hmm. that let's try to implement. All right. Uh, yeah, even if it's a trial or error thing, mm -hmm. it might work. We just need to be lucky mm -hmm. once. Diba? Correct. And the solution will be there. Okay, so... Uh, On that note, we'd like to thank you, thank you. Uh, Attorney Ariel Inton. And uh, of course, uh, you represent the Lawyers for Commuters okay. Safety and Protection. So, sana yung inyong organization will be able to help us. Hindi ba? Well, it's an, really, the, it was formed as an advocacy group helping passengers against uh, yung mga... Rape, na, mga sinasabi, mga, mga lahat ng diba? mga criminalities. Because yes. they need to be legally okay. represented. Pero... It evolves now to a to an advocacy group already. That's true. That that's yeah. true. Okay, so more power to you and you uh, your organization, and uh, we hope to invite you again very soon. Anytime. Okay, so thank you very much, and that's it for our latest episode of our show, Congress Diaries. We'll be back again next week. In the meantime, I'm your host, Kim Bernardo Lokin. I'll see you next week. Thank, thank you. you.